Hey everybody, this is SD Ghoster and I am back. I have gone over to the dark side. I am Titanfall. Well, I still enjoy Call of Duty and I still play it uh, on occasion, but uh, after having to wait basically an extra month to see if the hype of this game was anywhere near it, I have to say I am a believer and that brings me to the point of this video if why I think this game has lived up to its hype. So the gameplay you are seeing is Attrition, which is basically Team Deathmatch, and I'm playing on the map Rise, which is one of the best for wall running, wall hanging maps out there. And I'm using the car SMG, a very versatile SMG, no attachments, and the base model. And this is uh, a fantastic little map to play around, especially uh, given the ability to go on multiple levels. So, as I said, I'm, I do believe that this game is a little bit to this hype. At E3, it won 75 awards, kind of hailed as the next-gen, you know, first-person shooter, and then it's kind of dropped off in terms of what it's had, but to be fair, uh, the Call of Duty Championships has been uh, just come and gone. Congrats to Complexity. Watched it, a uh, fantastic match. Those guys are professionals and really show what it takes to be champions in it. And... Call of Duty is still a fantastic game. It, this is not a replacement for it. It's just a different first-person shooter out there. And to be honest, I don't know if this would be a, a fair to be compared to Call of Duty because Call of Duty can be more, much more competitive. This might be better suited into the casual, casual first-person shooters. And it is, you know, to be fair, a very good casual first-person shooter. And why I think it might be better suited in the idea of a casual first-person shooter is the fact that the score streaks, i.e. I read as Titans, are very well balanced to everybody. Everybody will get the Titan at one point during a game. I, It's on a two-minute timer. Unless the other team can completely close out a match in less than two minutes, you're going to get your Titan at least once in the gameplay. If not, the more skilled players get it quite more or never even lose their Titan. I think I end up with two Titans. One I leave in the auto form and then the other one I take control of. But when you think about it, score streaks in Call of Duty uh, really kind of reward it good players with high level score streaks. I know some of the guys I played with, they were quite excited when they got, say, the Trinity Rocket or anything like that. Whereas I would run, be running Trinity Rocket, Griffin, followed by my high-end score streak, whatever I decided it would be. Now, having a Titanfall work with a two-minute timer still rewards good players because at the end of the day, you're going to get your uh, time out much faster. You're going to be able to control it a little better. But for the casual gamer, the, the person jumping on who may not be as skilled, they're still going to be able to play with one of the the quote larger weapons in the game and it's just going to improve their uh, memory and response to the game and I think as a casual you know casual gamer that is something you might want to consider when you're looking at games. Now when I look at uh, some of the other mechanics of the game this game is very much a free runner. Uh, the ability to change levels very quickly uh, really allows players to kind of move about the map in a manner they see fit which really uh, limits the ability to spawn trap or trap an opponent into very tight fields of fire and really dominate them that way and as you can see in the past little bit of the gameplay I've watched you know players jump over walls I've wall hanged on a wall and uh, you might even see a couple of players run across walls and that, that's one of the mechanics that took me a little bit of getting used to, the wall running is very, very intuitive. Uh, you run up to a wall, jump it, and you can basically run it as long as you control it very well. But uh, the wall hanging does take a little bit of difference because it is a, a left trigger. And half the time I am trying to aim down sight and then I let go or it just ends up in bad news for me. Uh, but as I said... You know, it, it is a very free roaming and just really changes the dynamics of how you can move about a map and just play the map. But at the end of the day, it's still, uh, you know, a very limited, you can't fly around maps or anything like that. And, you know, you can kind of follow the way the, the game is going and how, how best to solve those. Uh, but uh, when you're looking at other things, 
the burn cards, which, uh, for to be honest, at the at the start of the games, I really didn't use them. I, I collected so many of them, and I really wasn't using many of them. But now I kind of see them as another very low end score streak where you know you, you get the chance to use them. You may not actually uh, use them, or use them, or you might even lose them before you have the opportunity to fully use them because. Uh, a lot of the times when I'm using an anti-time weapon, I get killed before I actually get to pull it out to use it properly, or it's just one of those things where you don't use it in the manner it was supposed to, and there you go. Uh, a lot of the tactical abilities, like as you can see here, I'm able to see kind of where he's going, it kind of outlines it for me. That is a very neat one, especially on a game map like this, where you're seeing you know, two, three, even sometimes four levels. It just kind of gives you make sure that you're kind of aware of the different tiers of the maps you have to be watching. Uh, I rarely see anybody using the stem, which allows you to run faster, but uh, that could be just, I'm not recognizing that they're using it. But the cloak gets used quite a bit, and it is very interesting. It doesn't completely outline, make them invisible, but it does, from a distance, allow you to traverse very open spaces and you know just get the drop on people and uh, move into from cover to cover if need be. Now when I'm looking at uh, other mechanics of the gameplay the one thing I really have an issue with is the melee attacks for both the Titan and the pilot. The pilot has a very cool anti-pilot one with the execution when you come up behind and I love that mechanic but in regards to say the jump kick. The jump kick is very cumbersome and they really should have come out with say an actual knifing mechanic or some form of bashing that wasn't so much a kick from when your both feet are you know, stable. It just it makes for a very troublesome and har hard way to get around in which uh, you you know have to kill a pilot and oftentimes I feel like I'm getting the drop kick on them and uh, they've moved that little bit because it's basically a foot. There's no, you know, no ability to catch or anything like that. But then the same can be said when I'm using a, a tine, the tine punch against tines is very effective. But when you're trying to say punch a pilot out of air, it it just seems that I more often miss. And when I do get a pilot kill with it, it's it's pretty fantastic, and I'm you know a little more excited about it. Uh, and the last mechanic that I think really stands uh, apart and makes this a, a very interesting game is the epilogue, which allows each player to have only one life, and they basically it's a it focuses the battle on one final spot where the pilots are trying to escape, and you can kind of work your way on it. The good news is it really should be concerned that you should be playing towards this final gameplay because. If you die here, it actually doesn't register on your final scores because it just shows that, you know, if you died once in the gameplay, you died once. If you don't, you know, it's, if you die after this in the epilogue, it's not going to change, you know, your actual final score. You're just going to end up like that. But that pretty much brings me to the end of this video. If you have any concerns or questions, you know, or if you didn't think that I missed something, please comment or like. And I will be back with more. I do plan to bring one with uh, a good buddy of mine, Firenet. We plan to do uh, an another commentary in the next uh, couple days. And so look for that. This is SD Ghoster. Subscribe, like, and I'll see you next time.